Hi, uh, my name is Yola Rosita. I'm the programmer at the New York Baltic Film Festival, and we are here. Uh, you've just watched uh, Pilgrims, and we are here for a little Q and A with the uh, director Laurinas Baresha and the actors Gabriel Bargalaita and Giedrius Skiela. So, welcome, guys, and thanks for joining. Um, so, let's start easy. There's a lot of topics that we can cover, and. Uh, a lot of interesting things that this film touched on, but maybe um, if you can just start by kind of talking about how this idea came to you or how you found the idea, which way around, and, and what, yeah, the, just the, the beginnings of the film. Hello, hi. Uh, uh, this film is, I did short film before, so it's connected to, to my short films and it's uh, hard to, to like know where it exactly started, but mostly I, I kept coming back to this idea of people visiting uh, the place where something really bad happened, but visually you cannot see it. There's no traces, but still they, they know it and feel it. Hmm. Yeah. So this is an idea that you've developed over the course of like over a longer time? Yeah, the script took like two years to write, but but I kept coming back to it like for four years or, or more. Like. Hmm. And it's, uh, and yeah, and the actors, maybe you can also start how, how you um, came to be in the, in the film. How did you find each other? Uh, so basically uh, there was this uh, casting director, uh, Maria Kaftaradze, and uh, she just invited uh, to the first casting and uh, we had a reading and so then uh, I don't know in, in a few months or maybe a bit more um, um, they decided to take me for the role and then we started rehearsing with uh, with the partner so uh, we kind of had this uh, I don't know a month or two of preparing but uh, the preparing time was uh, mostly while casting with others. Uh, so yeah, it was an interesting experience to, to try um, how it works with different partners. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, in the end, we ended up with Giedrus and uh, we kind of clicked, I think, for the role, for the roles. Uh, and director looking partner for Gabia, so um was casting yeah mm -hmm. and this is how and, i came to film and what was it that attracted you to the characters that you were playing and was there anything that you felt was really important that you wanted to to show through, through the characters well for me uh from the first readings uh it was was like three years ago I think and um, and at that moment I really felt like uh, in that situation um, where they're uh, you know going through those uh, places where uh, um, their uh, close close person uh, died and they're you know reliving it uh, kind of in a way um, I felt like in the script uh, the Indra character, like the girl's character, uh, I felt really um, similar to her in a way of uh, how she deals with her emotions after something uh, such terrible happened. Uh, so yeah, those three years ago, I felt that uh, the emotions she was experiencing or the lack of emotions she was experiencing was <clears throat> something that was really close to me. And for me, I think the, the most important thing for this character was to, to find, um, in a way, uh, it was like, for me, it was uh, important to, through her character, show that uh, um, it doesn't matter uh, in which way you're experiencing some grief or some difficult moments in your life, uh, it's still, it's still it's still really difficult and it it just depends on when you start uh, uh, feeling those emotions because sometimes uh, you may postpone them uh, for some time or maybe block yourself mm. 
Yeah, I was thinking about that a lot that you kind of, you know, it's easy to judge um, how people react, like both the people maybe most affected, but also the, uh, I wanted to talk about the village or the town where it, where it happens later, but but I'm kind of moving into it now. Um, it's easy to judge how the people have reacted to this crime. You know, you can be like, oh, why didn't they react sooner? Why is he so passive, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, so how, how do you how do you respond to that? You know, like, is are they too passive? Like, or is it kind of just everyone is dealing in their own way? Do we have the right to comment on it? Do we have the right to ask them to have called the police sooner? Or, you know, how do you, how do you feel about that? Uh, I can answer. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Okay. I'll point next time. Uh, so, uh, yes, I think as a viewer, you can do anything. I think you can question everything. And I was interested in trying to, to show as much different, like a big, uh, bigger, as much different uh, kind of types of dealing with like denial and uh, and um, like aggressive uh, kind of uh, explaining to himself, like there's a scene where a person just kept kept, kept saying that he wasn't there and, and everything. So I think there are different modes of normalizing such tragedy, uh, especially if you're not the one who is the most affected. So I think it's, it's and uh, and it's for this reason, I think uh, I tried to make, I tried to include the community as much for the viewer to have uh, some kind of uh, uh, point of reference. Like if you, you, like, because most of the people are not, it's hard to, to put yourself into the shoes of the main characters because the, what they're going through is so intense, but I think it's easier to say to yourself, what if I was the one standing nearby? So I think that is also very, very important to, 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 to kind of uh, discuss the, the different modes of reacting to such an event. Yeah, because I, um, I read a few reviews and, and it, I was kind of surprised, like this wasn't the memory that I had of the film and then I, I, I rewatched it after, but uh, some people seem to you know they judge the people very harshly and like oh this village is like trying to hush it up and like and and that wasn't the impression that I left with at all I was very I, I just thought that you know there was such small chains in the event that of course you don't react if someone like has a fight you know but uh, yeah I, it was just interesting that there's so, so many different reactions and another thing that struck me is now I can't remember because when the war started a lot of things change mentally, but I, I, I connected the film with the war in Ukraine. And I, I don't know if you had this experience and obviously it was made before, but is, was this something that you thought about or afterwards or? or... For me, this film is like, <laughs> because we had a premiere just a week after the war started, we have a local premiere. So it's forever will be connected with the war in Ukraine. I cannot even see other like this is the main interpretation that I, I kept coming back for the film is like, what, what do we do when we, we are faced with something that we can, because as like living near a conflict, there's always the choice of denying what is happening. And I think uh, as even like now, I think there's a lot of people who, who, who face this difficult, uh, <clears throat> difficult choice do i kind of try to restore some kind of normalcy or do i keep keep fighting and how do i keep fighting like how, how do i keep helping so okay. because a lot of people that i know really support and try to help but they are uh, kind of uh, there's less and less that you can do the the situation is so so getting so desperate and uh, and we, we ourselves start to get affected and it's always it's kind of uh, difficult to understand that you know it's something's getting more expensive and but still i have to pay and i have to 
it's not as bad as for other people, you know, and we, we need we need to keep reminding ourselves this and it's i think the the most difficult part because naturally we all strive for this normalcy mm -hmm. and uh, through a long period i think we can make very very harsh compromises and i think we we shouldn't make these compromises and i think we should keep supporting but but so now the whole pilgrims is like is connected just to this one event, so. And yeah. I, because I was thinking, and I know, I know this is a, a kind of a hypothetical question that, you know, that doesn't necessarily need an answer, but I was just, I just started thinking about whether the film could even be set in any other, could it be set somewhere else than in the Baltic States? Um, mm. Yeah, I mean, yes and no, like, I think, you know, obviously like smaller crimes and, and you know things happen everywhere, but these kind of war, you know, mass graves and 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 things like that. Of course, it, Baltic states aren't the only place, but but um, maybe in Western Europe, there's kind of the relationship to these these the history that's like uh, is different. But uh, yeah, so anyway, so maybe we can talk about the town again because I, I read somewhere that as well that it, this is yeah. So, sorry, maybe you should you should do the talking. So if, if you can talk about how you chose this town and and how long you stayed there and and. Uh, how you develop the atmosphere there? I chose the town because I wanted, I didn't want it to be a generic town, you know, not to have a name. So I chose this specific town. And also, this is the town that I, I was born in and my parents still live. So I could uh, manage the whole, I, and I wanted it to be geographically uh, like, I wanted it to have a geographical uh, for for the, the whole locations to have to make sense like right. that everything would be in a real place and because we shot chronologically so i wanted also to have a geographical also continuity so and i knew that i could find all these places that were in the script in this town so so that's why we chose it and also we lived there for one month and we shot everything there so yeah I just wanted it to be specific, like not to have, not to, re it represents a lot, but, but I wanted it to not to remain nameless. Mm. And Gedrius, maybe you can um, describe how, how did it feel, because it, it sounds like a very immersive process, you know, making the film, you weren't like going to the set for two days and then went home, like if you lived there for a month, like how, how was that for you in terms of how you um, developed your character? Uh, for me, it's good for actors, good because you, you <clears throat> when you're living in this atmosphere, you just, uh, and how director said, we chronological shooting mm -hmm. and it was, so it was, it was kino camp, you know, it's like we, one month, one month uh, together and one month in, in this mood. It's, yeah, it's for factors, it's really good. And did the whole team live there? Like did the cinematographer, did, did other people live yes, there? Yes, so all, all team live in, in this mm. yeah, small, small city. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, uh, since I mentioned cinematography, um, could you talk about how you, because I understand that you're a cinematographer loading us as well? Yeah, but for this film, the cinematographer was my close friend, Nardes de Snowyalis. He is actually, he was even at some point my kind of teacher, you know, because I, four years, I finished four years after him. So I learned a lot from him and I just feel safe with him i work like the composition and everything uh, and the camera position i do a lot of myself but but with him he was more responsible for the uh, night time exteriors and also for the continuity of the whole stylistic approach because i, I was working with actors and locations and everything so i just needed him for the stability and for this kind of someone I could uh, fall onto and someone I could, uh, I could uh, trust that he will keep me uh, in shape. And also he's like, he's as a person on the set, he's, he was also very important because he's this uh, 
positive, stable personality, and his brother was the fox puller, and we had this kind of sm small family going there. So it was kind of a good, good and good environment to work uh, on difficult uh, topics on the film. So yeah. Mm. And we, you mentioned the script earlier. Um, I just kept thinking, you know, like how, because the story is so vivid, but then when you think back, of course, like, you know, like you said, a lot of it is in the dialogue, it's not shown, you know? So obviously the dialogue and the script have to be very, you know, perfect <laughs> in order to convey that. How did you all work with the script? Like, you know, was it like, set in stone? Were you able to improvise a little, did, you know, or did anything, did you drop anything along the way? Like when you heard the actors kind of say something, you were like, did something change as you were filming? Yeah, because we work chronologically and I could edit in the evenings, so mm -hmm. I could change stuff and uh, add dialogue and we had like, um, and we kept like, we, we, we could see the flow of things. So for example, in the beginning, there was a lot of Gabia saying to to Polus that he, to Gedrus that he's stupid. So we kept like we had three or four scenes that were ended identically. So, but because we shot chronologically, we could adjust to that, and it really helped to to manage this switch between like because the beginning is for Polus and it ends with Indra, like this switch as a main as a main character of the film. So I think we also um, worked on it gradually. Like we had the whole structure of the film, we had the script, but the dialogues and small interactions, we kept changing by the feel, like how, how do we feel in that situation? And yeah, it, it helped a lot, yeah. And Gabia with Gedrus also, because they were, yeah, because sometimes even I, I we went like how they feel and how, how because some of the scenes that I imagined were like more intense or less intense, but in the moment we kind of went with the feeling what we have on the day. Mm. How did you, uh, Gabi and Angedius, how did you feel working like this and, and, and with each other? And like with the <sighs> weight of the script? You know, script was really good, and and then and and big and in beginning. So. All right. Okay. So um, I don't know. In the beginning, script was more about Polus, about man tragedy, and uh, when we're shooting, um, it's uh, going for woman. How to say for Gabia? more and for me it's more interesting because they too and it's like tragedy for buff so mm. you know it's like mm. so i'm glad uh, that 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 that's that's what's what what we've done with the script but uh, in the beginning script was really good and what 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 what, what wrote in what was so yeah, and for me, I think I would add that uh, this process of constantly, you know, seeing how it's going, and then uh, also I remember Lorinas would ask like uh, whether we imagine if uh, that could happen now, or whether it could happen for your character or not. Uh, whether you think it's uh, it's true for how you imagine the character, and uh, we had those talks and. Uh, uh, yeah, well, I, as I remember, like, for example, the text that was changing uh, and Lorinas would watch it in the evening and then and then maybe change some things and he would rewrite uh, the dialogue. And uh, then the other day we would uh, look it up uh, again. And uh, I think that from what was written, like maybe newly written or changed, uh, we didn't have... Uh, to change a lot while shooting because uh, the text it was really it's it was written organic and it was written to the point and yeah I think it was just a really good script writing so it wasn't uh, it wasn't a necessity to maybe change some way of talking or or anything and yeah it's obviously been been appreciated I, you know the film has has received a few awards already and and 
uh, hopefully um, will receive more recognition. Um, and to kind of wrap up, I, I wanted to ask you uh, both if you can kind of sketch out what your next projects are, each of you, and then also if you have any kind of ideas about um, the state, I don't know, like Lithuanian cinema, because I feel like there's a big, there's a shift kind of happening, I feel, in the Baltic states, and I'm wondering if, if you kind of feel like you're a part of it, or if you've noticed it, or if you, if you have any comments, but um, yeah, maybe Gidrius, if you can talk about what you're working on next. Uh, what what I'm working on next? Yeah, like if you're involved in any in any projects that are coming up as an actor. Mm. I'm working with theater more and uh, music. Yeah, like playing uh, in the band. Mm -hmm. We're working um, more with music and, and theater. But if but but if uh, if uh, some call for cinema. It's okay for me. It's always okay cinema. Mm -hmm. So we did. We don't have many films in Lithuania. You know, it's like, yeah, it's we, you should take what one film and then pause, pause. Uh, I would say, and and then another film is like like this. So mm -hmm. now I, I'm now in this moment I'm not working in any film. So. And Gabia? Uh, yeah, me neither. And um, I'm finishing my fourth year of the academy. Uh, so uh, there's a lot going on. And basically, we're, we're finishing our place. So uh, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Laurinas, what's, what's next for you? No, no, I just wanted to congratulate Gabia. I saw the films that she acted uh, yesterday. It was really good. She's in a horror film now, and yeah, congratulations. I can't wait to see it. In English, it was called um, Pensive, I think. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was a national premiere yesterday. It was amazing, yeah. But I really like when, like, I don't know if you can call it the new thing in cinema, but there is a lot of different experiments, like a lot of different directors, really young, really uh, searching for, for, I think, for the form and for themes, different themes. So I, I really feel the energy. Like um, I'm working on a new script, so yeah. But I also I'm working as a cinematographer and I shot like this, also a film on, on film stock, 16 millimeters. So also a lot of things changing, coming back. So yeah. Exciting. Well, Hopefully there's gonna be a lot for me to watch for, for next year's festival. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Well, thank you so much for the conversation and for joining me. And um, yeah, I hope to see you in Vilnius or in New York next year, maybe if you have something quick <laughs> that you can premiere. Um, but yeah, thank you all for sharing your thoughts and um, have a good night. Bye. Thank you.